Well, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to this event. I'm really glad to see MIT putting a lot of support in, the, in this institute. I wanted to mention that I'm on the WECS visiting committee, and two years ago, there was this new entity people were talking about. So I'm really glad that there's a name for the institute. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about data, but I am going to talk about trust, which I think is a common theme for this panel. In particular, I want, to, and this work that I'm talking, I'm going to talk about is joint with work I did with Virgil Gligor when I was at Carnegie Mellon University. And it really, we were proposing that we as a community have to look at a notion of trust in the context of networks of humans and computers because it's not enough to look at trust just from a computer science point of view or look at trust just from a behavioral and economic science point of view. Uh, in, in a network of humans and computers, it makes a lot of sense to look at trust from both points of view. Moreover, uh, mo most importantly, is to look at what new kinds of trust relations arise because now we are talking about humans and computers interacting. So that's basically the, the point of my talk. So we, I was originally motivated by this question of in a network of humans and computers, and we interact with, through the network with people all the time, uh, the question is how can I trust the information that I get over the internet? The, when I do a search on heart disease, I in fact get a very, uh, on the search web uh, re re response, I get a snippet of the Wikipedia page uh, that talks about cardiovascular disease, and the first link brings me to Mayo Clinic. I think I'm going to trust that information, assuming it really is a Mayo Clinic. Um, that's a computational trust problem. And the second link was, well, natural news, and well, maybe I will be interested in finding out what foods to eat, but that's probably not um, a website that I would entrust to understand the medical and uh, health uh, issues having to do with heart disease. So we intuitively trust some information that we read, and I, there's no good reason that we should, and why is that? So that's the question that was motivating this research. And here, let me just say in a slide what I've already said in words. The insight is that computational trust defines trust relations among devices, computers, and networking, networks. So those are the computational elements in this network of humans and, machi uh, humans and machines. And behavioral trust defines trust relations among people and organizations like John and Matthew already described. So a theory of trust for networks of humans and computers needs to include elements of both. That's, that's the hypothesis. So let me just start with a very simple communications model. I'm not going to go through the details here, but obviously we have Alice, who's the send, uh, receiver of messages from Bob, the sender. And all the computational elements of trust allow me to figure out a way so that the messages, the electronic digital messages sent between Bob's machine, the sender machine, and Alice's machine, the receiver machine, are secure and available and penetration resistant and so on. So I'm very much simplifying, uh, for the purposes of my 10 minute talk here, I'm very much simplifying a lot of hard work that goes into making those things green as opposed to red. Um, but let me just say that the bottom line is, in the end, Alice, how, how can she trust Bob? Alice needs to trust Bob. This is a human trusting of human now in the messages that she receives. And now I bring in some thought and insight from the behavioral and economic sciences, which is there has to be value in the act of trusting the sender. So Alice is going to click on that link because she's going to gain some information by clicking on that link and, and have value added to her knowledge base, or uh, et cetera. So uh, this is my one slide saying, here are all the ways in which we know how to, in principle, provide trust in, for, for computers and machines. We know how to encrypt data at rest. We know how to encrypt data in transit. Um, we even know how to uh, associate 
proofs of correctness to code that might be run remotely or shipped from machine to machine. And in case of failures, we know how to replicate things and use other fault tolerant mechanisms to ensure that uh, things can still run and that we can trust the computational elements in our networks. So the reason I'm glossing over all this very, very hard decades worth of computer science research is because I really wanted to focus on uh, the behavioral trust aspect of what's needed. So all of this, obviously, in my scenario with Alice trusting Bob, all of this is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Because in the end, we still have the Alice and the Bob, the two humans. So in behavioral trust, I am appealing, and now this is a, a computer scientist just dipping her toes into the realm of uh, social science. Um, in behavioral trust, there are many, many theories, uh, many, many theories coming from economics and social sciences, but some of the theories essentially say all you need to worry, have to worry about for trust w between humans, among humans, is beliefs and preferences and nothing else. And what I wanted to just illustrate this idea with is uh, the typical game theoretic model using a one-shot game, where here the receiver is going to be, in the economics term, a trustor or the investor, um, like the bidder or the customer, and the sender is the trustee, so the holder of the information. And this is a typical game uh, 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 you know, game tree that you'll see. So the idea is that you get, you, there's a dealer, and there are two players, A and B, and the dealer is going to give A and B ten dollars each. And then the, the rule of the game, it, the rules of the game are, are if A uh, trusts B, then um, sh, uh, she's going to send her, her ten dollars over to B, and the dealer is going to quadruple that amount. And B, uh, in playing the rule, uh, playing the game, will send back half of his total amount back to A. And that means that A and B, in the end, both get $25. So they start out with $10, and they both end up with $25. That's really good, because in A's act of trusting B, they both win. They both net $15. So that's the good case. Of course, we have other cases where, for instance, if A trusts B, but B cheats, B doesn't send his $25 to A, then A loses entirely, B keeps all the $50, and A gets nothing. And that's like not really nice. And there's also the third case, where A doesn't trust B at all and decides not to send her $10 over. That's fine. They both get to keep their $10, but they lose out because they could have gotten $15 more. So these are the typical games that I think um, many of you are familiar with. Now, it turns out that um, there's a notion of, uh, it turns out that if A finds out that B cheats on her, there's a desire to punish B. And this desire to punish B, which is called bet betrayal aversion, is, has been proven to be um, uh, neurologically uh, implicated in that there's brain activity that uh, suggests that A actually doesn't like to be cheated and wants to punish B. In fact, if it turns out that B is not a human but a machine and there's a random device, and A is less, um, um, less um, a desirable, desiring to punish B as much as if B were a human. So there are these experiments that play this out, that people have done. They've put, done, done PET scans on people, human beings who run through these experiments. And in the end, the elements of behavioral trust really boil down to these beliefs, beliefs in the trustworthiness of the trustee, and these two kinds of preferences, risk preferences and social preferences. And it's the social preferences that are new, at least um, pretty much new to my own thinking in, in this. Um, and it's this degree of betrayal aversion. The, the, basically, what the experiments show is that the, um, that risk, 
that, that betrayal aversion is a stronger inhibitor than risk aversion in the act of trusting the sender. Intuitively, this means that people are more willing to take a risk with a, a certain probability, uh, knowing that the, there's going to be some bad luck, um, than with identical probability uh, and knowing that they might be cheated on. So all of this is very interesting from a human behavior point of view. But what does this have to do with networks of humans and computers? And here I now want to draw what in computer science and the computational elements we have um, been implementing, not in any systematic way, but just because that's how uh, our technology has evolved, to address each of these elements of trust. So if, for instance, in beliefs and trustworthiness, we have things like reputation recommendation services that help assure, say, Alice that you can trust this, this, uh, the sender. To decrease risk aversion, we have things like insurance policies that social sites uh, put out, websites put out. But with respect to decreasing betrayal aversion to build deterrence, for instance, against not playing the rules, um, there's very little in computer science that we have studied. So I will end with that, especially to the students in the audience, that there are plenty of PhD thesis topics left uh, to, to explore in, in this. So let me just stop there and say, this is what I'm purporting, that to understand networks of humans and computers, trust in networks of humans and computers, we have to understand the combination of computational trust and behavioral trust. Thank you.